Concrete is the foundation of just about everything. Concrete is responsible for modern civilization. I mean, to be blunt. You walk on a concrete sidewalk. Dean Martin planted his feet in the specially prepared concrete. When you travel, your aircraft lands on a concrete runway. Drinking water is provided through concrete pipes, not to mention what we know as concrete jungles, cities. In fact, concrete is so popular that it's the most widely used man-made product on Earth. For every person in the world, about three tons of concrete gets used every year. It's been a very durable, sustainable, resilient material for thousands of years. After all, it was essentially concrete that built Rome those thousands of years ago. To make concrete, we need cement first. The two materials are inherently tied together, but they're entirely different products. But this essential construction material has fell victim to pockets of shortages across the U.S. The cement itself is becoming more and more difficult to get. We're not unlike many industries. COVID caused disruptions in supply. Now, demand is expected to increase. The global cement market could be worth over $458 billion in 2028 as more millennials buy their first homes and after the Senate passed a major $1 trillion infrastructure package. I believe it's a historic investment in roads and rail and transit and bridges. All of which need a ton of concrete. We don't have enough workers, ingredients, capacity to deal with the demand right now just coming out of the private sector. At the same time, this kind of production emits a significant amount of carbon dioxide. One study estimates that global cement production accounts for 8% of global CO2 emissions. That makes it the largest single industrial emitter of carbon dioxide. Here's how the cement concrete supply chain works and whether it can handle the demand from the new $1 trillion infrastructure spending plan. Demand for concrete rises along with construction activity. In 2019, 70% to 75% of U.S. cement sales were to ready-mix concrete producers, which was worth at least $65 billion. First, it's important we point out the difference between cement and concrete. Cement is like the egg of the concrete recipe. So concrete is produced when cement makes a paste with water, uh, and that's joined with rock and sand to heart. So concrete is more of a value-added product. There are many different recipes for cement, but the most common one is for Portland cement. There are different types of cement. It's one that's cheapest to make and is most prevalent is gray Portland cement. Call Portland because it's named after the gray stone on the Isle of Portland, England. The first step to making Portland cement is getting all the ingredients or raw materials, mainly rocks. Four primary ingredients, calcium, silica, alumina, and iron. These are the most common elements in the Earth's crust. Calcium is the main ingredient, calcium carbonate, AKA limestone. The process of making cement is still the same today. You have to get raw material. You gotta get raw material from a quarry. Cement companies own quarry space, where they use explosives to break apart the Earth to find the right minerals needed. This quarry here is part of Lehigh Cement's operations in Union Bridge, Maryland. It's expected to have about 80 to 100 years worth of limestone. All the raw materials get crushed together into a powder. And then after it's ground and crushed, they put it in a rotary kiln. That kiln heats up to... Typically about 27, 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the way, that's about a quarter of the surface temperature of the sun. So it's really, really hot. And because it's so hot, we have these really uh, complex chemical reactions that are taking place. After the crushed rock cooks in the kiln, it turns into material called clinker. Then the clinker gets ground up again into a powder. This time materials like gypsum are added into the mixture. And then, it becomes cement. The process is still the same. Well, it's pretty much the same. The U.S. cement industry has a rich history. American industry shows the impossible accomplished. Almost overnight, the world's largest cement plant rises. These early U.S. cement manufacturers helped build the Holland Tunnel, the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, and the Panama Canal came true when America... A project that changed global trade as we know it today. Now, cement production occurs in 37 states. 
making the industry super local, which is part of the supply chain problem now. When the coronavirus pandemic struck in 2020, the U.S. economy came to an abrupt halt. The cement industry wanted to prepare for the coming recession. The last recession, after the 2008 financial crisis, caught the industry off guard. It's like they uh, expected to have big shutdowns because of what happened 10, 12 years ago, uh, 2008, 2009. All of us expected the same thing to happen. Demand fall off a cliff. And that didn't occur. This affected supply levels, which is why the industry isn't seeing cement volumes it normally would right now, causing that supply tightness in local markets across the U.S. Sullivan says the cement market still grew by 2% overall in 2020. And a lot of that growth came at the very end of the year. Like Lehigh Cement and Union Bridge, they're sold out for at least the rest of the year. Another pandemic issue, the ongoing labor shortage. Such a process just to lay a concrete slab. That's human beings, and there's not enough of them that do that kind of work. And the higher the market, the greater the increase in prices. It's hard to find truck drivers who move the product around locally. We rely upon trucks to deliver the cement from the plant to our terminals. Uh, I think 97% of all our product flows by trucks. The red hot housing market in the U.S. during the pandemic increased demand for concrete. Instances in which supply is unable to keep up with demand, what that leads to is bidding wars. You know, people are competing for concrete slabs, lay foundations, and that raises the price of those kinds of things. Like, not just for foundation building, but also for things like uh, patios and driveways and so on and so forth. So lots of demand out there, supply chain disruptions, higher prices, big inflation numbers, frustrated home buyers. Plus, weather events and cyber attacks can shut down production, another reason the industry sees delays. These current supply chain kinks will work out in the coming months if economies continue to reopen at the same pace. And as of now, it's predicted that the U.S. has the capacity to manufacture the cement it needs. Assuming imports of chemicals and ingredients arrive on time, drivers and laborers are hired, and that extreme weather events don't shut down production, and that there aren't any COVID-related shutdowns. Of course, that demand will increase even further thanks to the infrastructure deal. We have ample capacity to meet even the most robust infrastructure bill. You've got to identify what projects. You've got to identify the suppliers of those projects. You've got to do bids and reviews, and it takes time. But you also have to look at it with carbon emissions. What happens through the life cycle of that product? How's, how's it produced? How's it used? What happens when it ends? Cement production also comes at an environmental cost. There is some positive correlation between economic activity and our greenhouse gas footprint. To the extent that demand is higher, the industry is more active, you will tend to see more carbon released in the air. But we're looking at carbon neutrality throughout our entire value chain and, and reaching that by the year 2050. Our value chain isn't just cement or concrete, or for that matter, what happens at a cement plant. From a material science standpoint, that concrete absorbs CO2. Now, it's not a game changer, but right now we estimate about 10% of the CO2 emitted during the manufacture of cement and concrete is actually reabsorbed through the lifespan of a concrete structure. And when a concrete structure is demolished, we can reuse that aggregate for new concrete. The prospect of more climate-friendly cement has attracted big name investors. Breakthrough Energy Ventures, which is backed by Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and other high-profile investors, recently invested 2.5 million euros in Ecosem materials to roll out new formulations of environmentally friendly cement. Um, I think it's going to be uh, two key issues. One is green and everything that surrounds that on the product side, as well as on the production side. And the second one is, is the infrastructure bill. Even without the pandemic-driven labor shortage, the industry needs to train more workers to make up for retirements in the already shrinking labor pool. So as an economist who wants to see a larger U.S. economy, a more efficient U.S. economy, one that has more infrastructure available to its people, it's frustrating to see so few young Americans in particular enter the skilled trades. And that's, again, one of the reasons that we have these shortages of infrastructure, these very high prices. So in the long term, I suspect we will have enough cement. But in the short term, we continue to have these supply chain difficulties, particularly in certain markets. 
Uh, and so prices are rising. And so right now, apparently, supply is not rising up to meet demand. The capacity is not there. I still think that we're going to be facing some shortages and high prices through the balance of the year. But you'll start to see more a better equilibrium form over the course of this year and then into next year.